We've been working on a little set of videos about databases and database queries. This time, let's talk about text and numeric queries. That's one category, one kind of queries you could make. This query can have three different forms depending on how much of the field information you already know. In the first example, if you know the whole field name, I gave a city an, a city of Barrage example. Let me uh, zoom in here and show it to you. You see the city of Barrage. If you know the whole city name and can type it, then that would be the method you would use there. Uh, you could type in a zip code of 48503. I don't have that on the screen, but you could do that if you know the exact the exact information, the letters or the numbers. Sometimes you'll know only part of the field name. In that case, you have to use a wild card, it's called, to replace the missing letters that you don't know. The wild card is always an asterisk, and it's used throughout computers. It's a very important concept to know. What you do is insert this asterisk every place where there are letters missing. So if I wanted to know the city, the names of all cities that start with letter B, so if I wanted to know the names of all cities that started with the letter B, I could type B asterisk, and it would look for a letter B, and then any letters afterwards. That's how that one works. Let me give you another example. Let's say that I wanted to know any client number that has an 11 in it. And if I look at the client numbers here, you see they're in the format of two letters and two numbers. And so the part I need to replace with the asterisk is where the letters go. So why I would type asterisk 11, and that would replace the letters and look for 11, and I would find that Peel radiology. And the third example, let's say that I know there's a street that has the word Crest in it. I don't know the whole name of the street. I think Crest is at the beginning, but it wouldn't matter the way I write it. I don't know the house number. So I'll type an asterisk for the blank house number that I don't know, and then the word Crest, and then I'll put another asterisk after that because I don't know what comes after that in the street name, and that way, I would look here and find Crest View, and the search would return that, the query, because I had asterisks in all the places that the word Crest didn't appear. The third kind of query we might do is if you don't know anything in the field. In other words, we might ask the user to type in the information they want when they run the query. That's called a parameter query. For example, you might say, well, type in the name of the city you want to look at, and it would pop up when you run the query. It would pop up, and then they could type in Tarleton, for example, the city name. One thing you should know about these parameter queries is if you make a mistake and type something incorrectly when you make the query, it will come up with what looks like a parameter query for you, and then you have to know that that means there's a mistake, and you go back and fix it in that form in the design grid. You go back and fix it in the form. So now then, what I'd like to do is some people will see that and say, oh, that's it, and they're done, and they can go work. Some people want to see the whole example. So I have divider screens, and I'll show each example in turn, and, uh, and that way you can zip through the video if you don't want to see the whole thing. Hold on just a second. So this is that uh, same table, that client table that I had been working with, and let's say we want to find the city of Barrage. I'm going to be zooming in and out. I hope I don't make you dizzy to do this, but I think that will be the easiest way. I'm going to click up on the Create tab, Create, Query and Design View, and then you have to add the table you want, so I'll add that and click Close. Mm, you could resize this if you wanted to. 
don't have to. And just to make it easier to look at, I'm going to go down and get that horizontal line with the two vertical arrows. Okay, and just move that design grid. You don't have to do that, but it's easier to use for me. And now double click client name to put it down in the design grid. And then I want to look for the city, so let me double click city. You could just drag it, click and drag if you wanted. But <clears throat> okay, so we are looking for the the city of Barrage. So I'll type on that criteria row. The criteria means the rules we're looking for, or the requirements we have. Look for the criteria row. Okay, and then I'll come up here and run. You know what? There's no difference between run and change to the data sheet view. It's the same thing. It's just a different view. So I'm going to click data sheet view. And sure enough, then there's my two cities that are Beerage. We're going to move on now to the second kind of query, the wildcard query. Let's go look at the Access Database and see what we can come up with there. This time, instead of typing in the whole word barrage, I'm going to type in just the B asterisk. Let me show you what that looks like. B asterisk, asterisk is all you have to type. If you click off it, the computer will actually change it to like quotation marks B asterisk quotation marks. That's for the computer to use. You don't have to worry about it. And this time I'll type the run button. And I get not only Barrage, but also Burles, which is another city that starts with the letter B. And if I had the uh, some word in the middle, I would just type asterisk, like aster like asterisk, b asterisk, for example. I can't do it on the city very well, but that's how you would do it. The same thing. Good. All right. Now let's go back then, if I can get the right screen here, let's go back and look at number three, which is the parameter query. And where is my screen here? This one. This time, instead of instead of typing a name, because we don't know, we have to tell the, the, the user to type it, I'm going to type a left square brace or square bracket and then type enter city. Those are instructions to the user. I put a colon, but it's not required. Those left and right square braces are to the right of the letter P key on your keyboard. But do you see what I type? It has to go in square braces, not curly braces, not round parentheses, not less than, greater than. It has to be the square braces. Okay, and then when we run that, it will say to me, enter city, and I can type burls for the city name, and then it will give me my result. That's what you do if you don't know what the user wants for the criteria. All of this information went on the criteria row, okay? And so that's the way these three kinds of text or numeric, it doesn't matter, queries work. You go try them now.